Hello everyone, welcome back to Crochet Delight. I'm Barbara, and welcome back to another installment of Hot Off The Hook Friday. So, as you can tell, my scenery has changed again. Um, things have been moving pretty fast. We've been cleaning, we've been changing everything. My dad just put down a new floor, so everything that was in the kitchen is in my workspace. So now the kitchen's my new workspace. It might change again, who knows, but um, I want to thank you guys for all of your support and before I show you guys what I do have done for Hot Off The Hook Friday, I want to say thank you to Sue for the card. It made my mom smile, it made my dad smile, and it made me smile. So thank you very much. This has gone right up on the fridge. And any cards that you guys send will go right up onto the fridge and when we don't have room for that on the wall <laughs> so thank you thank you it really brought a smile to all of us um, we all really need the support uh, things have progressed quite a bit um, <clears throat> my mom hasn't been able to watch any of my videos lately because Unfortunately, she is in and out of a childlike state of mind. So for anyone who is recently going through something like this, or anyone that's not going through something like this, but you are getting close to something like that, I am going to let you know it is hard. It will be very hard to look away from the person's face, knowing whether it's your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister, no matter who it is in your family, it's going to be hard to look at them and not think when they say something very harsh that it's not actually them saying it. Um, they will say some really, really harsh stuff towards the end if they, throughout their life, has, have been pretty stubborn. <laughs> and very opinionated um, they will be very scared and that's why they'll be saying it but they won't realize they're saying it my mom has just in the past couple weeks done that quite a bit and it's very hard to hear so with me I either need to break completely down or shut my emotions off and be cold but you're not necessarily being cold. You are shutting your emotions down and trying to be professional about it, trying to make sure that they get their medicine, that they get the care they need, and trying to look out for their safety. Whoops, I'm a little bit of a klutz today. <laughs> but um, you're trying to do what's best for them uh, while at the same time keeping yourself from breaking down constantly. Last night, I did have a major breakdown because there were things being said from my mom that are pretty harsh, and it's hard not to think that it's her saying it because I know in my head that it's the childlike state she keeps going in and out of that's saying it. It's not actually her saying it, but it will get to the point where I can't help clean her, I can't help feed her, she's already stopped eating. The only thing that we can get in her is an insure and water, and thank God we can get her medicine in her. Um, it's keeping the pain at bay, but it's, it's going to be very hard, and it's going to get a lot harder. So for any of you that are going to go through this, or are going through this, Brace yourselves. It, I'm 24 years younger than my birth mother, and I shouldn't be going through this. None, no one should really go through this, but it happens. So keep your heads up, and if you have to shut your emotions off, go ahead and do that. There's nothing wrong with it. So, sometimes when they get into a childlike state, the best way 
to help them is to say, okay, you can do this if you do this. Or me, I'm more stern with my mom. So when one family member is having a hard time giving her her medicine, they'll say, I'll go get Barbara. And she'll be like, okay, I'll take it. <laughs> Uh, sometimes she'll put up a little more of a fuss, but with me, she'll definitely put up a fuss. But I'll be more stern with her until she takes it. And sometimes that works, and if you don't have somebody there to help you or to talk with you, reach out to someone that you know has gone through something like this. Or I'm here to talk if any of you want to talk. Um... As you can see, I'm opening up a little more about what's going on behind the scenes of Hot Off the Hook Friday and Crochet Delight all together. So, it's not easy to be this open, but it I kind of have to for my own sanity. Because <laughs> um, if not, it, I'll have another repeat of last night. <laughs> I was literally bawling my eyes out last night uh, from all the stress of everything. It's, it's not easy. And uh, my dad, as you guys know, is a Navy SEAL. Uh, he's a retired Navy SEAL. He chose to retire because the fourth tour uh, that he was asked to go on gave him knots in his stomach, so he said no because he had already done three and the last one he was left for dead and he was lucky to get back but um it's hard for him to take it because yes this is his second wife that's going through the exact same thing lung cancer and she's losing weight i mean it doesn't look like it because her liver is so enlarged but she is she's not eating and she says some pretty hurtful things from time to time. So, unfortunately, it gets to even the toughest of the tough. Because you you know way back then, he went three tours into Vietnam. He's my grandfather, but he's my father. He raised me. And he's that tough. Back then, the training was so immense. They'd throw you right off. A helicopter with just a knife and have you battle sharks as you're swimming to get to shore literally that was no joke and the boot camps were so incredibly tense and if you didn't pass you pretty your life was literally on the line no matter what you did whether you were sleeping or whatever just going through the training courses was your you had to have the mindset of okay if I don't do this I'm dead that's how bad that's how bad um that training was back then I mean not compared today today where there's weekend warriors I know it's not that nice of a thing to say but you are weekend warriors if you only go once a month to the what is it national guard you're still doing a service, yes, and we appreciate that, but you have it a lot easier. <laughs> you have it a lot easier than our Vietnam vets, and my dad was one of them. <clears throat> and it's hard for even a Vietnam vet who has kept himself busy to keep himself alive because there were Vietnam vets that stopped doing stuff and they died really young after but um another thing that i want to bring up before i get to everything is a while back uh one of my friends was publicly humiliated on youtube by his own cousin and one remark that his cousin made was that the veterans did not fight for our right to become YouTubers or anything like that, play games or anything like that. To the people that think like that, 
pardon my French to all of you who don't hear me swear, but go fuck yourself. Seriously, you don't know what people like my father have fought for. They fought for our right to have freedom of speech and to put YouTube videos out, to put games out there for people to play, for to become actual professional gamers where they get paid for that and where they get paid for putting a video out speaking their mind. They fought for that. So if you've got it in your head that they did not fight for our right to have freedom of speech or anything like that, you might as well go to Africa where women are nine years old and being forced into marriages with 90 year olds. Go there where there is no freedom. Don't you dare say that you know what our Vietnam vets have gone through for us. Hamburger Hill, no joke. Vietnam, no joke. World War One, two, n no joke. No war is ever a joke. And our vets have fought tooth and nail and died for us so that we can do stuff like that. So that we have the freedom to get a coffee or just walk around outside and speak our mind poli uh, politically, no matter what it is that comes out of your mouth. That's the freedom to speak your mind. And they fought for that. They fought for our freedom. And yes, the United States doesn't have that much freedom, but it has a lot more freedom than a lot of other places. I mean, yes, there are certain laws which that stupid law about not being able to get an abortion. That, yes, our country went bad on that. Because I don't care if the woman is raped and stuff like that. You do not tell the woman what to do with her body. If she, I'm pro-life, so if anything like that happens to me, I'm against abortion. So I'm not going to do that. But if something like that happens to someone, you can't tell them no. So yes, that's one example of our country taking away some freedom. But our vets did fight for our freedom, so don't pretend like you think you know what they fought for. I live with a Vietnam vet. He raised me. He's my best friend. And I know because he's told me. So uh, if you're this scrawny little puke that doesn't know crap and you're <laughs> just walk away or you'll get bitch slapped by someone who does know so but like I was saying earlier thank you everyone for all of your support thank you for any cards that come our first one to the P.O. box I'm working on getting address labels so that I can send mail back and Sue you've got a letter coming so keep an eye out, um, but yeah. All right, so I think I've talked a little bit about that for a good 13 minutes, uh, almost 14. So what I'm gonna do now is show you guys what I did. I haven't really gotten much done because I've been working on a yarn order and a poncho order, and I've been getting things organized to give spinning lessons. So if you want to know about those, email me and I'll talk to you guys about it. And there are ways that I can do it for all of you. I can do like a FaceTime if you're like in California and you can't come to Maine to do the spinning lessons or something like that. So it's available for pretty much everybody. But okay, you guys know I did highlighter dyeing. And I think all of the videos for that came out already. If not, there's one more. So, most likely when I do videos like that, there's the actual um, product. So, I have them done. And I have them all rolled up. And with highlighter dyeing, if you do one ounce, two ounces, it doesn't matter how much, you will get a variation in color, so. 
as you can see, there are some darker spots, some lighter spots, and this is actually the green. It looked blue, like ocean blue, when I did this. Um, but it turned out like a teal, and it's beautiful. But, um... But there you go. You'll even get some white spots. And the best thing about highlighter dyeing, you want get a pastel and it's nice, bright, and vibrant. But you'll also get white spots and you're not felting the wool too much. I mean, yes, this is a little felted, but it's only slightly felted. It's to the point where you can really just pull it apart. It's not felted felted. So that was the green. Now this one is extremely bright. The pink. And as you can see, like I told you, there'll be white spots. So, but then there'll be extremely vibrant spots. So, you'll definitely get a variation. And the best, you can either spin it up the way it is, which is fantastic. I've done that before, but I do admit I love blending the fibers because then with this you'll get the purple, you'll get the pink, and you'll get the green, and highlighters. Get a dark light, your yarn will glow. It will, and it is beautiful. So like I told you guys way back when I started this, this is um, another version of the um, lightning bug yarn from my paradise fibers kit that you guys helped me name so here's the pink and then lastly I would say this is more of a lilac Let's see if I can block the light a little <laughs> but there are white spots definitely and then there's just nice purple spots. So this, I would definitely say, is more of a lilac, which is gorgeous. But um, highlighter dyeing is pretty easy to do, and it's beautiful. And when you go to blend it, oh boy. it This color combination is going to turn out a very, very beautiful um, blend. <laughs> I don't know if I'm gonna add sparkle to it. I might. I don't know just yet. I usually... this is probably going to sit aside for quite a while. I might wait and use this for some of the spinning lessons. So. And I actually, in this one, the purple, I got a little bit of the teal in there. So, a happy mistake, as Bob Ross would say. There are only happy accidents. No, there's no such thing as a mistake. And that is fully true when dealing with making yarn. It doesn't matter if you have what you would call a mistake or an accident. It's a happy accident or a happy mistake. So I'm actually gonna rewind these. <laughs> but um, that is actually all, whoa, didn't have a good grip on that. This is actually all I got done this week because taking care of someone who has cancer is pretty much a full-time job and last night I was left to my defenses. I was left completely alone to take care of her and it it's definitely a lot easier to handle when you have someone to help you. So, <clears throat> but 
It happens. There's nothing we can really do about it. Um, it's definitely not a happy thing. It's complicated. But as long as you have something to keep your mind occupied or someone to help you, then I think you're going to be a-okay. Um, it'll definitely be a lot easier to deal with everything when you have somebody helping you. But alright, that is it for today. So have a delightful day and happy hooking everyone. Bye!